All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? We got Clem in the top left side of the map and Shin in the bottom right side. Now, Shin, I think he cheesed Clem out last week, right? I can't remember which tournament it was. It was one of them. Maybe it was the same cup. This is the Warty Mondays Cup semifinals. So I think it's a rematch from last week's semis. Shin down here going for what appears to be a 15-15 opening up against the probably two ranks Reaper wall off. Now, to be fair, I felt like on Dynasty especially, Clem played some of the... He just played with no respect, right? He, he both didn't look to punish the gold base and also played with no safety. So I, I, I think his play was bad. I think I, I, I really felt like that second game Clem played like poop head. And I think we want to see Clem knuckle down. We want to see Clem show what he's made of and show some respect to Shin because Shin is scary, man. Remember, Shin beat Clem in Katowice as well. He beat everyone except Bunny in his group in Katowice and they were almost all Terran. Um... The Bunny series was incredibly close. Bunny barely beat him, but, but he beat Clem. He beat all these other top tier Terrans. Now that's a very early gas pool. So Shin is doing once again one of his special builds, guys. Um. Yeah. Oh, what is this? Fifteen fifteen normally doesn't have have gas this early because look at his minerals, guys. He's not even going to be able to afford two queens when the sporting pool finishes. Like he, he can't build zerglings and queens at the same time. So he's he's rushing link speed and but why offer 1515? 15 is usually not very good if you're going for the early gas. But we'll see. We'll see how he works out. He can make up for it with the early queens. As long as he starts two queens, he needs 300 minerals the second this pool finishes. Let's see how he irons this build out. Oh, he lined it up. He lined it up really well. But he can't afford the link speed straight away, can he? Builds one more drone. And now he's not going to spend this lava because he knows he, he needs 100 minerals. So he builds one more drone and he builds that one. And then he pulls off and 100 minerals instantly starts Ling speed. Okay. All right. You know what? You know what? This is okay. I think he's looking to do a Ling flood potentially. Having seen the low ground Reapers, I mean, this makes sense, right? 15-15 with early Ling speed on this map makes sense actually because he's predicting two ranks Reaper. He wants to both get up early in Jax and early Queens to defend, but then also have early Ling speed to surround the Reapers, kill them, get map control, secure his third base and just play probably a macro game from there so not a bad opening it's just a bit of a twist and this only it would be really bad if clem was doing like a one racks expand just a normal three cc build but because it's a two racks it's good and oh, oh my gosh there's a banely nest you know what we were casting clem earlier clem rayner game five uh, was it game five game four one of one of those matches at ewc where they played there was a game where, where we noticed that clem was wide open after his reaper died to a links around to a Bane bus. Like, he just automatically would have died. He did not have any safety precautions whatsoever. And I think Shin might have noticed the same thing. Because he never builds a bunker behind this. His add-ons are also on the outside of the wall-off, which is incredibly vulnerable. No third base just yet. 12 more Zergs, but it's only 20 drones. Shin is so all-in. Shin is so all-in right now. Queens are coming out. One of them does get bounced. This could actually be good. Losing a queen we don't care about, especially if you can hide the Zerglings. So, so Clem's like, ha ha, I killed your queen. And Shin's like, ha ha ha, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's going to be a little lower in injects because of it, but I don't think he cares. I think surprise is the most important thing. Barracks lifts off to chase off the Overlord, but as long as he can't kill it, that doesn't matter. Ooh, and he's building a starport on the tech lab. Okay, wow. But if you can blow up that reactor, stop the double Hellion production, and then just bust in, what have you got right now? Three Reapers and two Marines. A tiny army. The Overlord there. Going in, going out. Here comes the Massling Bane. He's waiting for the Zerglings. You don't want to go in too early. He's got enough Banelings. The Marine goes to the outside. He's got to raise the wall. He does. Two Hellions are out. The two Hellions might be enough, but he needs perfect micro. The Reaper Hellion should have gone up the ramp. Crazy move for Clem to stay on the low ground. He should have pulled up that ramp to the high ground. His Hellions are stuck on the outside. They're dying. The Hellions are getting surrounded. One Hellion's down. One Reaper's down. The other Hellion's still standing strong. The Reaper's in the choke point fighting very well. These other SCVs are needed in this battle. They're needed there right now. But oh gosh, the Banelings are here. They ain't much use now are they? The Reapers are exposed. The last Hellion goes down. He's only got one new Hellion. It just popped out. The Banelings trying to blow up on those SCVs. He gets a big hit. He takes out the SCVs and a Hellion. Massive move here for Shin. And Clem caught with his pants down. I do think if the Reaper Hellion ran up the ramp, he would have been fine. Running to the left was a big mistake. I'll talk more about that in the post game. If this does indeed end up being game over at this moment, which I think it does. Clem... He's in trouble right now. He's going to try and drill with his SCVs. Notice how they're all attacking at once and one-shotting the Zerglings. But you can only do that so frequently. Shin says, I don't care, dude. 
I, I know I'm losing Zerglings here. To be fair, attacking into the choke point is kind of crazy, but he's tearing down so much. Clem is not mining while it's happening, and that's huge. Gets the mule as well, and there's not enough SCVs to one-shot Zerglings anymore, which is a big problem. It's a really big problem. So the SCVs now, they're just damaging a Zergling each time they attack. There's not that many left. And that is going to be a huge problem. 23 drones against 7. The Banelings are in the worker line. The Banshee should be able to deflect it, but not before it gets some hits. And it is going to take down one more Baneling. Spreading that SCV at the last second was kind of beautiful, but kind of beautiful ain't going to cut it because those Zerglings are going to town. He needs to lift off that barracks and wall off the base right now. He still hasn't done it because he's been so busy in the main. The mule goes down, and that's going to be GG. One SCV. Barracks goes for the lifty lift. That's still not an opening. You need to lift the factory as well. Need to move that factory over one more space. But Clem realizes one worker ain't going to cut it. And that is GG. Let me talk about the theory of that with the Hellions. Can you guys let me know if you disagree? Always interested in, in kind of theory crafting things out. So basically, if he runs up the ramp, he has like endless room to run backwards and kite. Here, he's got very little room, right? Because he's running into the edges of the map. Yeah? So that's number one. Number two... The, the, the initial Ling Flood is very scary because there's so many Zerglings. And you need extra SCVs to help fight against that once the Banelings have been focused down. You've only got a few SCVs that can help you fight here. So I think this is clearly a mistake running to the left. He should have ran up the ramp. And even though he does a good job of focusing the two Banelings down, notice how these Hellions are in trouble. That, that, the Hellions just kind of getting surrounded out front. The Reaper getting surrounded. If he kept the three Reapers and the two Hellions alive and kept moving and shooting, the Zerglings would have had a really tough time winning this game, especially as the SCVs join in to help out. GG though, nice all in from Shin. All right, that was a nasty game one. Clem once again is going to have to learn respect for Shin, man. It was a Shintastic build. I, I was like, what is he even planning? It's so weird, but a 15-15 normally just sits there without a third base for a long time droning up, but has a very delayed Ling speed. So it really didn't raise any alarm bells. And that's part of why Shin designed the build like that. He said, this looks like a normal 15-15. You don't expect gas to be up this early. And uh, obviously he even hid, uh, or hid, sorry. He hided, he hid the lings as they moved out, which was just, just the nail, you know, the cherry on top of the cake, the nail in the coffin. Clem, I still think could have held despite that, like I said, with perfect Hellion Reaper control. But, you know, you've got about two seconds to react. I'm not going to be overly critical of a player doing that. Do you see the way he just he's microing his SCVs, guys? You'll notice they, they move faster, whereas the ones he's not moving, microing, they slow down. Look at this guy. See how he slows down? So they slow down to return minerals. They slow down. Whereas what he does is he actually selects them and he says, move next to the minerals, then click on it. So they, they don't decelerate. And this is this try-hard micro that just slightly improves your mining time on these. Um, Harstam does this occasionally Clem does this a lot very few other players ever do this because it gets you a few extra minerals but that's that's the level of speed APM and detail Clem has where he's literally like I want to get 10 extra minerals and I'm going to put in a crazy amount of APM to do it and if you're not lightning fast it's not worth it because if you are too focused on that and you forget to start your reaper on time if you're even a second late on your second barracks or your depot it, it, it basically means it wasn't worth it at all so Harston was like joking about he's like oh yeah you know this is I, I'm pretty sure I saw him laughing on his stream about it where he's like yeah I do this a lot but I'm pretty sure I hurt myself, like I screw it up so much that it's actually not worth it because I, <laughs> I'm i not consistent enough at, at actually like, you know, doing it perfectly without messing up like pylon being three seconds late or something. And I'm like, yeah, that it, it definitely is an absurd, just Clem, Clem level detail. But uh, it doesn't cost him anything, you know? This is just the speed he naturally plays the game at, right? People think of it as being stressful. For him, it's just how he plays the game. Speed, momentum, and aggression. Speaking of speed, momentum, and aggression, up a tree with the big raid. How are we doing, Sal? Hope you had a great stream. We were just talking about how Clem uh, cues his workers to speed up their mining. So he moves them next to the minerals, then shift clicks it on the minerals, and then shift clicks it back to the command center and then onto it so that it doesn't decelerate so we can get like 10 extra minerals in the early game. If you guys, Sal's viewers, if you can convince up a tree to do that on stream for a whole day, I'd like to see his brain melt. 
as he does something that is inordinately fancy for next to no gain, and it breaks both his brains and hands at the same time. Um, I don't think anyone could pressure me into doing it, to be fair. I, I think I would lose my mind before I got to that level of optimization. Uh, Barracks are here. We've got the reactor in the tech lab factory as well. Clem builds a third command center right underneath the overlord. Shin's like, I'm watching you, boy. Oh, he just got the drone. Nice snipe there. So this is a more standard build for Shin, right? He's gone 15-15. He's got link speed, but his third base did get delayed a little bit. Now, he's only got six links, but Clem is going to respect it and run home with his Reapers anyway. He's building Hellions nice and early. Starport on that tech lab. Feels like Clem feels like he's very, very confident right now. Like, like he just thinks that this build don't doesn't die to anything. And to be fair, if he microed his Hellions in the last game, he wouldn't have died to that Baneling boss. But because he microed incorrectly, it did cost him. Second gas coming up on the natural, back on mining on the first gas as well. Good thing about this build is you're mining your full two mineral lines so early, and you can easily just rally over to that third, but at this stage, this little supply block for Shin does hurt. Needs more Zerglings to secure this base. It's only on four queens, fifth and sixth one about to come out. Should be seeing an inject in this main base any moment now. All right, the Reaper Hellion Micro is really good. Notice he focus fires the Hellion because the Reapers are just going to heal themselves. A queen already goes down. This is really bad. Shin, Shin, get back to the high ground, mate. You can't be fighting against three Reaper Hellion until you have multiple transfusers. Like right now, this queen is super vulnerable. Oh, the Ling's going in the line. I'm not a big fan of this engage. Shin, he does manage to get a Reaper, but for so many Zerglings. Dude, these queens taking a lot of damage. Finally, the transfusers are going down, which is nice. He should be able to transfuse this last one as well. More creep tumors would be good. Three command centers. We've got Banshees on the way. Hellions as well. I don't know, man. I feel like Shin's opening has definitely hit a bit of a roadblock now. He's got three more queens. Banely nest on the way. Don't get me wrong. Stim's are, uh, ages away, but Banshee's coming forward. Spore Crawler's in a very weird position. Oh, he's expecting Liberators. Oh, Shin is not expecting the Banshee. Here it comes. Uh-oh. Nothing in the natural right now. It's in behind the natural. Badly placed Spore Crawler. Banshee's going to find big damage. The Hellions have been very distracting this game, as have the Reapers, and we find a Zerg player with very greedy Spore Crawler placement. Now, to be fair, Cloak was not quite ready, but once... We, we did no Spore on the third. Oh, no. Shin, what are we doing, mate? You gotta run these drones, bro. Oh, whenever I pull drones like that from a Banshee, I'm always worried Hellions are going to drive in at that moment and toast them. Going back right underneath that Banshee. Banshee's doing way too much damage. Shin just been optimizing his cheeses too much over the last few weeks. His standard game is not holding up to Clem. And this is a problem. Because if you can't make Clem respect you in the standard game, it's going to be that much easier for him to defeat you with the cheese. Uh, to, to, to defeat your cheese. Spore Crawler just moved out. Why'd the Spore Crawler move out? Shin! What are we doing? I get I get you got to protect the queens from the Banshees, but it's more important to protect the drones. Oh, Shin's falling apart. This feels like when I play Clem. Where I'm just like, well, he's everywhere. All of my units are dead, and I've killed nothing. The unit's lost tab is is just insane. 2,300 to 600 resources. The drone's getting toasted. That one there was actually a decent little hold. But Shin is just miles behind. There's still a Reaper in there. Get him out, mate. Oh, my lord. And the Banshees ain't done yet. 16 kills on one, two on the other. Extra few drones stacking on top. Stim's done. Marines and medevacs moving forwards. And I just don't think there's an answer to that. Shin is still stuck in the droning phase. Meanwhile, Clem is on five barracks. A factory, a starport, three command centers with Stim Marines attacking the front of the base. A queen goes down. The Banshees are still rotating. He is going to run out of energy momentarily. Might be losing them. But no, he's got to pull back to the front to defend the Marines. Siege tank, if it gets in that nice little corner, it has amazing coverage over this entire zone. But Clem's just going to siege it in the open. Lazy boy siege does deny the fourth base shin is done game two super one-sided there and this all started with shin just basically like it felt like he just was too eager to secure the third base he was so worried about being behind in the late game he's like i gotta get down here i gotta spread creep you know i gotta do this but it's like dude if he's committed to three reapers and you're too greedy to build a big surround of zerglings you can't push him back at this point shin should have built 20 zerglings he did not. 
And because of that, he couldn't threaten the counterattack. Not that it would have worked, because there was a wall off. But he also couldn't threaten the wraparound. If he built 20 links, hid them, came in from behind, he could have punished Clem here. But if you don't preemptively have enough units ready, he gets out of control. And these queens moving back to the low ground and starting to lose them, like, this is a big mistake. We should not be losing queens here, right? Especially just a second before this other queen gets transfused. And that starts to snowball. The spore crawler is being very greedily placed to optimally defend liberator harassment as well. Felt like there was a few too many hard reads going on here for Shin. Now, to be fair, he sees an extra barracks there. And maybe he thinks, oh, cool. There's definitely no Banshee because the tech lab's there. But we've seen him do this in the previous game. He does like the add-on on the natural. And yes, guys, Shin does like playing StarCraft with Diva's voice in his ears. All right, guys, Clem in the top right side. Shin in the bottom left. Looks like he's going to go back to a hatch gas pool. No 15-15 this time. Game three to decide it all. Clem really enjoying the low ground Reaper wall off. I remember in Katowice, I criticized a lot of the Terrans for doing this repeatedly versus Shin because it's so vulnerable to all ins like the Bane busting game one. I was very vocal. I said, why are you doing this, Clem? Why are you doing this, other Terran players? Like, I really think you guys are vulnerable to Ravager Ling all-ins. I think you're very vulnerable to Bane busts. And I think Clem's answer to this is like what we've seen, where he's just like, oh, it's fine, because I put Factory on the Reactor, Starport on the Tech Lab. So even after Turex Reaper, he still goes Hellion Banshee. Hellion's very safe versus Zerglings. Banshee's very safe versus Roaches. So I, I, can, I can totally get behind it. On the other hand, for Shin, how do you get Clem out of here? I'm thinking about some nasty game plans. I don't know. The problem is that last game is just such a kick in the kick in the nads. You know, your, your, your faith in your macro game might not be there. I mean, an old classic, old faithful is just run Ravager Ling around the left side of this map. And if, if he doesn't spot it, you can, you can always potentially win with that. It, it, it requires a big mistake. And I think Clem is going to be on high alert for cheesing like he's gonna be you cheesed him out last week you tried you cheesed him game one game two you just got absolutely walloped in a macro game of course you're gonna go back to cheesing like clem's logical thought process here is look 80 percent chance shin goes for some sort of giant attack before the eight minute mark we don't know what that attack will be we still have to scout and do all the things check all the boxes to play a safe solid game but it, that alertness and the fact that you can afford, if you're in doubt, if you're like, oh, I don't know if he's all in or not, I really lack the information, you can always choose the safer option. If there's two options, choose the safer option every single time as Clem in this scenario because you just don't need to be greedy against him. Now, to be fair, it's kind of Clem's MO to be a little greedy no matter what, but we'll see how he does it. Nice spore trick there. Defending the Reaper without the 15-15 is so much more annoying because this queen is a good 12, 11 seconds later. Queen's going to transfuse. That Reaper rallies in. Takes a bit of unnecessary damage. Good dodge on the grenade. All right, so is that a fourth Reaper or a third? Just three Reapers, guys. We do have a second gas up. So it's going to be, once again, that quick factory and starport as a Marine comes out and a reactor goes down. The Reaper's going to be ready, bouncing around. Bouncing around. The Queen dodges are very on point, though. I really like the way Shin's doing this. And he actually ends up bouncing his own Reaper. Very nice. Uh, for Shin, that is. Very nice micro. Six more Lings are on the way. Remember what I said about Shin? I'd like to see him build a few more links. He's going to go 14 Zerglings earlier this time, but, but he's doing this so early. Why is he doing this so early? Why has he still got a worker on gas? Shin, what are we doing? He's only on 27 drones. Oh, I guess because he did a hatch gas pool. He didn't do 15, 15. No worries, this makes sense. Normally, you'd want to drone a lot harder before building Zerglings with a 15, 15, but since this was a 16 hatchery, this is absolutely standard. That was just me forgetting that he, he opened up differently this game. Nice little evacuation. Hello from Bakersfield, California, says Rocket Rock in it. How you doing, mate? Do you guys bake good bakery products? What's Bakersfield known for? I hope you guys having some nice weather. Dude, it was so warm this spring so far, everybody. But the last few days, it has been so cold. We actually had our coldest day of the year, at least in terms of like upper range temperature. It, only, it never got past 13 degrees. Which, uh, normally, even on the really cold days, it's cold at night, right? It's cold when the sun's down, but the middle, of, like, the, the middle of the day, normally it's, uh, it was our second coldest, I think it was. It's kind of weird, so we just had, like, a, a totally just, like, rainy, cloudy, crappy weather the last few days after weeks of basically full summer in early spring, which has been fantastic. Uh, a lair coming up right now. 
Only one worker on each gas so far. What is this style? Just just 1-1 one, one Roach? Okay. Shin's just going to play 1-1 one, one Roach. And this is a classic style. Now, you can do this into fast lurkers to catch Clam off, or you can just commit all out to the 1-1 one, one Roach. The problem is, how do you convince him that you're playing not Roaches? You can't. You've only built five queens. Shin's not even trying to hide it. So Shin's playing Roaches... He might just play melee carapace. I don't think he's going to upgrade the roaches. I think he's just going to try and play roaches to help defend. And then he's going to go into a macro game. Hellion Banshee's coming in. He does see that Cloak is on the way. Trying to surround the Hellion a bit ambitious. I, I don't like that. Good pullback. But he's got to be careful. Oh, the split. Clem's hunting. Clem's hunting. Ooh. Anyone call for some barbecue? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be some toasty zerglings, that is. Ooh. Ooh. Very good for Clem here, man. That's really nice. Lair's done. I, I I feel like Shin might have been thinking of like opening five roaches and then swapping into muters, but at this point, it doesn't feel like a clean transition. He, he desperately needs to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the macro game. And that's going to be a tough ask. Third command center's done. Double upgrades should be starting right now. Two barracks. Going to be pumping out marines. Hellion Reaper's still active on the front, getting amazing trades. Two drones go down. Roaches not even able to take out one Reaper. The roach from behind. Gets a few hits off, but it goes down as well. This time, much quicker overseers. The Banshees get shut down. Nothing in the natural. No Zerglings. Those Zerglings getting chased down is a problem. Clem. Oh, it's time to burn some Zerg. Roast them, toast them, and chuck them into the oven. These Hellions and Reapers are going to get right up there. So many drones going down. So many. Eight, nine, ten. Not to mention mining damage. This was a game where the Zerg economy was already not very impressive, remember. Does get a few more shots off. Takes down 13 drones. Another Hellion drives in just to add extra annoyance here. Does get himself one more drone for that Hellion. Not a great trade cost for cost. Shin was droning during it. He did start a fourth base just now as the pressure ends as well. But he, he needs more. He's got Carapace on the way. Infestation Pit. I think your best bet is Shin. And in general, when you're behind against Clem, I always feel like is, is trying to catch a hold of him with something that limits his micro. And for... Rainer, if you've got that attention level, it's always Burrowed Banes. For me, I would probably try Infestors. He's playing plus one range. Oh, if he's going Hive, he definitely needs to play Infestors. Because I just don't think after all this damage, Shin can make it to Lurkers and Vipers without something in the middle. Some, something that can change the, 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 the dynamics. Because right now, these Marines are just going to have free range of the map, running around, eating whatever they want, picking off Zerg, denying the Creep Tumors. A little derpy on the pickup for a moment. For Clem, by Clem's standards, that was a bad pickup. Losing two Marines unnecessarily. This is like the... There's a different scale for commentating Clem to other Terrans now, guys. Anything that's not perfect is a, in quotation marks, mistake. For other players, would be like, good pickup. For Clem, we're like, bad pickup, you know? Man, man has set different expectations for himself at this point. Marines moving around that top left side. Roaches are there. Good pick off of the Marine. Nice move by Shin. Shin's going to go Banelings. Oh, I hate the Baneling transition. Ugh, gross. There is double factory pumping tax, tanks, guys. So it's five Barracks Marine, two factory tank. Medivac's being mixed in as well. There is a fourth command center. Clem is setting up for a macro game. The reason why I don't like the Ling Bane transition is it's awkward trying to find a way to get rid of your roaches. To be fair, I wouldn't have minded this because he didn't build that much Roach Ravager. Only 18 roaches in total if he went melee carapace. Because he went range upgrade... I'm like, ah, I don't know, man. We'll see how it goes. He's making more Ravages right now. Bane Speed is started, as well as the plus two Carapace. He's got 82 workers, does Shin. It's just going to be hard to hold off this advance. Very, very hard. Banshee is there as well. Here we go. Roach Ravager on the front side. Nice Biles just to force the siege. Slows him down. Doesn't do anything. Like, he kills one Marine and runs away, but that's okay. You can see the Zerglings getting mixed in are going to absorb tank shots very nicely. Take it away from the center of mass of Roach Ravager. Biles do force him to pull back, but not on the stationary targets. Clem easily dodging the Biles. If you don't have Fungal, there's no way to, to, to slow this advance down. This is what I was talking about. Oh! Clem is pushing very deep, though. Dangerous push for Clem, but if he has the numbers, he will be able to break Shin here. We'll find that out in a moment. He's got the numbers. Three tanks still along Eve. It's an expensive fight for Shin. And Clem takes an exceptional position. If he can get rid of that gold base here, it's a problem. The tank's not sieging on the front because he knew the Ravages were in range there. So it makes sense for him to not bother sieging those. Oh, does spread at the last second. Beautiful. 
spreads in three different directions to avoid the Biles. The tanks are now sieged up. One of those tanks will go down. Medivacs do dodge. Marines fighting as best they can. Ling's getting on top. I think Shin's gonna hold. I think Shin's gonna hold. Oh my, he's done it. Shin's gonna hold. That tank of the south goes down. They all go down. That is a total of six tanks. 58 Marines have gone down. A brilliant hold for Shin. And Clem may just have overextended. This gives Shin a chance, a lifeline. I did not feel like the Banelings did anything in that fight. You guys let me know. Do you think Banelings did anything in that fight? I think they did literally nothing. And this is what I don't like about Banelings with this style. I think you need the Banelings later, around 11 minutes. But I think for that first hold, it's very... Like, they're not really adding anything. It's just the Ravages, Roaches, and Zerglings that end up defending you. I don't know if, if that's me being incorrect on that. But I really feel like this is the reason a lot of people going Banelings die to 8 racks as well. Is the Banelings become amazing the longer the game goes, the more scrappy it gets. But in that big frontal fight... When you're first transitioning to them and you still have a lot of Roach Ravager on your front line, the Banelings never connect. They never even get close to connecting. Planetary is going to take down the Roach there. Hatchery on the right side gets... Ooh, three drone snipe. Nice. Oh, you guys have a hurricane in Florida right now, don't you? I hope you guys are all safe and well. Hope it's not too bad. Roach is going off the sensor tower. Nice snipe, nice snipe. So he's going to go Ultras. Ultras are awesome, but Spellcast is a key. Now he's going Ultra Viper. Serral's a big fan of Ultra Viper as well. You guys know my thoughts. Infesta is king! Especially because when you're up against a guy like Clem, you can Parasitic Bomb all you want. It's not going to kill the Medivacs. He's just going to split them up. It's going to over time gain value, but Fungal is the only thing that removes Clem's skill. If you land a Fungal, he cannot Micro. And it, there is when there's multitasking going on, it's, even Clem is not able to dodge the first Fungals. Right, especially with Unburrow Fungal, how many times have we seen him get hit? So I, I'm a big believer in that, that if we people want to be able to deal with Clem, you have to take away his micro. I know that sounds kind of silly, but it, it really is the way to beat him. You know, um, Burrowed Infestors earlier, sooner has to be the play. Plus two melee, plus three carapace, kindness plating. Now to be fair, Blinding Clouds on the tanks could be massive. I'd love to see Shin bust here, abduct the tank, blow up these two command centers, and blow up this command center soon after. This is the one weak point Terran has when they're gearing up for late game, is if you catch the command centers while they're still building, that's Terran's weak point. If those get all get built and he can distract you with just a few marines or something like that, that's where things get really rough. This is a great distraction. But I think this is smart for Shin. Commit. Yeah, Banelings actually click on the command centers. That probably wasn't necessary. I love the planetary fortress cloud, blinding cloud. The planetary goes up, dude. Shin, that was a great fight. He just got three command centers in a tank. That's awesome. Even if he loses this hatchery, I don't think we care. He's on five hatcheries. I wouldn't mind him canceling and rebuilding this. But he's going to save it for now. Biles across the front line. Oh, Clem's trying to counterattack. Dude, Clem's a savage. Clem is an absolute psychopath, isn't he? Clem is such a wild man. Now, all three Vipers did survive. Clem, Clem is one of these guys, no matter what you do to him, his answer is always to counterattack. This is something like it's it's you have to learn the reflex when you think no Terran would would do anything but, but turtle now. Clem is the guy who will counterattack. I mean, I've been there watching Clem's games with Rainer before, he's cheering for his friend Clem, and he's like, "Come on, kids, stop attacking, just turtle," you know, like. And Clem just keeps charging into the creep and going and going and going. And he's like, "You you don't need to attack, just defend." But Clem has a way of making it work, man. Blinding clouds, pretty good. Banelings, though, did not connect with the bio. Oh, gosh, the Banelings did not connect at all. The Snipes eradicated the Ultras. The Vikings are killing the Vipers. Oh, man, that was a stellar engagement there. Dude, the Banelings just did not connect. And even though the Blinding Clouds were good, they weren't good enough. Oh, man, did Clem just get a game-winning fight? Six Ultras, 74 Zergings are on the way as well. Oh, my gosh. Oh, 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 my lord. Ling's coming in. Here we go. Ghosts, Marines, Marauders, Vikings hanging out. 75 Zergings, 4 Ravages, 1 Roach, 9 more Banelings are on the way. 6 more Ultras coming as well. I, oh man, this is where Fungal could be so punishing. It's kind of like using Storm against Terran, where Fungal stops Terrans from ever being this aggressive in the first place. But look at the way... Oh! No, he does Ultra popping out as well. Very nice. This is where Vipers would be amazing, but those Vikings did such a good job of sniping them. Dude, Clem, and he maintains position on the front. He hasn't even re-established that command center. He lost a lot of commands and he's just kind of like, I, I got the gold, that's all that matters, I'm fine. And I think actually Clem should focus on taking this base and really just control the right side of the map while building a planetary somewhere over here with a few tanks behind it. 
Tank planetary on the right side. Ravages should be biling down those siege tanks. They will take out one. Baneling's clicking on the planetary. Get in, get out is the name of the game. Shin is 8,000 resources behind. He's only got one Viper rebuilding. And you got to realize with Clem out on the map like this, yeah, I, 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 know, I know Shin's broke, but he needs Burrowed Infestors. Income's still good for him right now. Couple of banelings get caught morphing. Look at the ambition. Look at the way Clem moves around the map. This is crazy. For a guy with three orbitals to be this deep in your territory, it shows he has no fear because there's no serious anti-air and there's no splash damage that he can't avoid. Banelings are too easy for him to dodge. Oh no, did he just, did he just win? Clem's position in the natural is unbreakable. The Liberators are doing massive damage on that base as well. The Ultra attack getting sniped down. The Banes, the Ravagers trying to deal with it. The, the Biles will take out. No, they don't even kill. They don't even kill. Meanwhile, the Natural Ultras are coming forward. If these go snipe, Clem can take it out, but he's got to pick up. He's got to get out of it. He pulls the Ghost away and he lands the snipes. And Shin has to tap just like that. Oh, me. Oh, my. Oh, Lordy. McLord, Lord. Shizzle gig my tizzle fizzle. What is the units lost? I have 13,000 resources lost. Dude. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Like, the way Clem uses his army is actually unfair if it's not fungal growth. If you're not landing storms or fungals on him, I feel like he's just disgustingly, oppressively aggressive. Too many adjectives, I know, guys. I'll get better with my words in future. But, uh, wow. Just excellent play. Really excellent. Shin did a good job, much better. It's a shame that Amphion, he got wrecked so hard so early. I loved his all-in in game one, but uh, Clem seems really confident right now with the two racks into factory on the reactor, starport on the tech lab, Hellion Banshee follow up to two racks Reaper, and he just gives no room for Zerg to play their game. Really well played by Clem, gets revenge for last week.